The Panzer II was a light but effective German light tank. It was a significant upgrade from the Panzer I, being armed with a 20mm autocannon and a coaxial MG34 machine gun. Its armour was still very light, like the Panzer I, and only being effective at stopping standard small arms rounds and shrapnel, but anti-tank rifles and guns could easily penetrate the tank. In combat, the effectiveness of the Panzer II varies greatly. In its first operation in Czechoslovakia annexation, very little fighting took place, but their reliability and maneuverability were tested thoroughly and proven to be good. Next came the first true test of combat with the invasion of Poland, where 1,223 Panzer IIs took part. The tank fared very well against light tankettes and infantry, and was able to outflank and dominate light emplacements and fortifications. Unfortunately, Polish AT weapons and their more modern tanks were able to destroy the Panzer II effectively, leading to a loss of 83 in total and 32 of them in the Battle of Warsaw alone, as the close quarter combat was not suited for tanks, especially lightly armoured ones such as this. After Poland and the strengths and weaknesses of the Panzer II were shown, many commanders wanted the tank relegated to rear guard and mop up duties, but this was not done. It was sent into Norway, where they were backed up by three Nabu Fazrung heavy tanks, and in Norway they saw very little combat, and only two were lost in the entire operation to enemy AT guns. The next major engagement was the Battle of France, where all 920 Panzer IIs were gathered together. There was major concern as the French had far superior weapons and armament on their tanks, but the Panzer IIs were more mobile and with their radios had far better coordination, which they used to outmaneuver and outflank enemy tanks to great effect. Another major factor was that Germany concentrated their armour together and were able to eliminate the more scattered and isolated French and British tanks. Still, losses were fairly high and the Panzer II's weaknesses were getting larger by the day. Panzer II took part in limited numbers in the Balkan campaigns and some were sent to North Africa where the speed and mobility fared well in the large open deserts and proved to be very effective scouts. Then, just like its younger brother, the Panzer I, the Panzer II was committed to Operation Barbarossa. 782 were sent into Russia mainly as scouting and screening units, but with them being outclassed in arms and armour by all but the lightest Russian tanks, they did not fare well in combat. The Germans tried to remedy these weaknesses by adding extra armour plates to them and equipping them with tungsten cord armour piercing composite rigid rounds to increase the main gun's penetration. But after heavy losses in 1942, the tanks were pulled off the front lines and were relegated to other duties, with many being converted to vehicles such as the Marda II and some being given to Allied nations. The Panzer II throughout World War II had many variants, most being slight upgrades over the last version, but there were a few standout variants and prototypes. A couple of my personal favourites are the Panzer Kampfwagen II, the Flamer Panzer II. This Panzer II flame tank had a total of 342 of the two types built. They were armed with two flamethrowers mounted over side tracks and a single MG34 for dealing with light resistance at range. They were initially supposed to join the invasion of France, but not where enough were built in time, but they did join Operation Barbarossa. Not much is known about their combat history, but one single engagement had them engage Russian troops in a dense woodland. Due to the fact that the tanks could not enter and small arms fire kept the German infantry from pushing in further, eventually the Panzer IIs were commanded to burn all the forest and bush down. This resulted in many Russian troops surrendering and many being caught in the flames. Even though this was an effective use of the Panzer II, Germany did not invest heavily in flame tanks as other nations in the war as they were seen as waste of resources compared to heavier tanks and more heavily armed tanks such as the Tiger or Panther. And my favourite variant of all the Panzer IIs was the Lukes. This was the pinnacle of Panzer II design in my opinion. 100 were built and there were significant improvements of the base Panzer II with a longer barrel 20mm autocannon and increased armour protection all around ranging up to 30mm. It also had smoke launchers on the front mounted. It also had improved engines and suspension meaning it was quicker and more mobile than the standard Panzer II and had good ground clearance making it a fantastic scout and raining vehicle. Unfortunately, by the time it saw combat, it was heavily outgunned by what other tanks it versed, and it had very little effect on the outcome of the war. All in all, the Panzer II was a great light tank, and definitely was worth the resources it took to develop it and produce it, and by the end of the war, it and its conversions had earned the respect of many a tank crew on both the German side and its enemies.